Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and welcome back to the series of Spark Review. Um, I've already done a couple of reviews you may have been following. The unboxing setup and updating and also the first flight test where I tested some gestures and some selfie modes. Um, this is going to be the part two of the flight test and what we're going to do today is basically boot up the Spark and use it with the controller. But what I also want to do is test some of the functions I missed in the part one flight test which are going to be the the, um, you know some more of the selfie functions the the uh, quick shots I don't think I really did those that great so I want to revisit those really quick and then I'm gonna pop um, in another battery and we're gonna do a full battery with just the controller here so you'll be able to go ahead and check that out almost 11 now and that's kind of when the breeze picks up I'm here in Hawaii and the breeze is coming from this direction right now at about 5 but it's kind of variable so if anything, we'll be able to see how this thing does in a little bit of wind, five to 10. Now, what's cool about this is, as you can see, I have this little thing on here from uh, Doobie Accessories, and the controller fits all the Mavic Pro accessories for the controller. So you can, if you have the Mavic Pro, you can use the accessories on your Spark controller. You can see that the buttons don't really line up, but that doesn't really matter because you can't use the controller anyway. But the joysticks line up, so you can use all these little attachments you got for your Mavic for the Spark as well if you wanted to. You don't have to buy new ones. And today I'm also going to be um, testing out the Mavic Pro Sunshade. So let's get started. Okay, so just got the Spark here set down on a launch pad here and as mentioned, I'm just going to start with the phone, do the quick shot mode, get some of those quick shots going, and then we'll go ahead and link up the controller. Now, I did have the controller linked up before this, so I want to show you how to, if you have the controller linked up, you have to go into Wi-Fi only mode. So I'll go over that really quick. So first of, first of all, of course, we want to power on the spark, click, and then click and hold it down. And that's going to be starting up. And what I want to do is start recording my screen so you guys can see what's going on on my screen here. So I'm going to open up. I'm using the AZ Screen Recorder app. That seems to be pretty good for Android here. I'm going to hit record. And then I'm going to go into, um, into the DJI application. Actually, before I go into the DJI application, I want to go into my Wi-Fi. Okay, and when we're in the Wi-Fi, I want to show you here that we may not see the Spark if you're linked to the controller that comes with the Flymore combo, or if you bought the controller separate. This is what's going to happen is, um, out of the package, mine was actually linked to the controller, so it wasn't even showing up if, I, if you go directly to the Spark. So as you can see, I can't see it in this list here. There should be something spark something or other on there so nothing's showing up so what you need to do is you need to hold in the power button when it's on and I'm gonna do that right now and uh, one beep if you hold it in and then you hear one beep that's for linking to the controller and then if you hear two beeps that's for enabling the Wi-Fi to link directly to your phone so let's go ahead and do that so just holding it in until we hear two beeps one two beeps letting off so now what's happening is it's enabling the Wi-Fi it's going into the direct to phone connection and we want to be searching again if it doesn't automatically search and there we go so you can see how I had previously attached to the spark 46a6 c7 is mine and you can see it's connected so it auto connected once you punch in that first password when you first connect and we're ready to go so now I want to go into the DJI go 4 app And it's just doing a version check. And let's just go ahead and go fly. So I'm pressing go fly here on the screen. I'm gonna turn it in landscape mode here. And it's saying overall status is great. This is stuff I did cover in the first review I did flight test. But this is where we wanna test some of those quick shot functions. I didn't really test properly in the first one. So just wanna go through that again with this battery. And then we'll go to the remote controller. 
Cool, so we got 12 satellites. Maybe you wanna wait just for a few more satellites. We got 13 now, I'm looking at the top GPS where it says GPS to the right of that. We can see how many satellites we have. Preferably, you just wanna let it sit there for you know a few seconds to get the most satellites as possible if you want the return to home landing to be perfect. Cool, so we're ready to go. As you can hear, the wind is actually coming up pretty hard. It's coming from this way now at about 10 to 15. So we're getting some gusts. So this will be a good idea to show you guys, you know, if it actually performs decently. So I'm gonna launch here now. I'm just pressing the up arrow for takeoff, sliding to the right. Little spark's gonna lift off. It's recorded its launch point. Looks like the wind blew it just a few inches out of, out of whack off of its launch. So this will be good to see how much it's influenced by the wind. And again, we are pretty much ready to go. Um, so, with these functions, what we wanna do is wanna be able to control it on the screen. And you see over here on the bottom left, I did cover this in the first part of my review, but um, you click this little control icon here and you can put the sticks off and on the screen. Something I may have missed is when you take the sticks off the screen, you can click and hold the screen until you feel a vibration. And this is where you can actually rotate your gimbal up and down. You see how I'm just dragging my finger up and down? So you can do it that way or you can also push these arrows to the right. You can either hold them or tap them to get the gimbal where you want position. So that's how you can manually adjust your gimbal. So what I wanna do is I wanna position it. I wanna fly it kind of over here. And I wanna position it for these advanced functions. So I'm gonna go up a little bit. You can see how the sensors are already sensing me. And here we go. So we'll go ahead and press on the controller icon. And we'll go into quick shot. Since I didn't really touch too great on that in the beginning. And when we're in quick shot, see how I'm out of frame? It kind of zoomed in a little bit because it's kind of in video mode now. I want to press down a little bit and then I want to click on myself. And you see how it kind of got me in view and then it goes through this little instructions on how to do everything. So um, this is where I kind of <laughs> didn't do it so great in my first part of my flight test. So we're going to cover this real quick. And so now it's tracking me, but it's getting ready to do this quick shot. And I don't want it to fly back over there. I want to do a droney and I want it to fly back that way. So it has clear skies behind it. Hopefully it doesn't hit those power lines, but they're kind of low anyway. All right, so here we go. So I'm going to press go. And what that should do is initiate the recording and the spark's going to start flying back. So say you're on vacation and you're on the side of a cliff. I'm just gonna wave here, hello. It honestly doesn't seem like it's going very high up. I hope it doesn't go too far away. Okay, so you see how I'm not quite centered in the picture? Hopefully it's gonna Hopefully it's gonna come back soon. I had to stop it because it looked like it was gonna hit that telephone pole there. Yikes. So really, it's only going straight out. It's not even going up. And I don't know why it's not doing that. So I don't wanna hit any trees or anything. So I'm gonna bring it back as quick as possible here. Okay, because I don't wanna hit the trees or the, or the telephone pole. So keep that in mind, man. I don't know why it's not it's not going up at all. It's just going straight back. So a little bit of a con there. It's kind of deceiving because the picture on the screen showed it going up and away. But for some reason, it's just going straight out. So I'm full pitch forward now, just trying to fly back towards me. And what that should do is when it completes the droney, it should um, fly back towards you. It just seems like, honestly, you need a big area. It might have gone up a few feet, but you see how it's only a few feet higher than where I started. So let's try this again. Let's try a different um, quick shot. So I want to, I'm gonna press on myself again. I gotta get out of stick control. Press on myself, there we go. 
So remember, what I messed up in my last review is you gotta you gotta go into out of stick control, and if you're in the quick shot mode, you have to press on yourself to select a target, <clears throat> and then you get these modes. So let's go ahead and do a circle. Okay, go. Again, it's gonna start recording, and it's just gonna circle me. So I think it's doing active track too. So if I wanted to walk around. I should be able to walk around too, so it's kind of doing a circle active track. And it is going to adjust its, it's going to come closer or further away from me if it needs to, um, to keep its its range for me in that same exact position too. So seems to be doing pretty good. I am having some wind from this direction. And there it goes, it just kind of stopped. Quick shot ended, okay, and it went out of the whole mode and lost track of me. Uh, I'm going to re-click on myself here. And let's try one of these other functions, and this is the helix. You see that kind of like a circular upward motion? And let's try it. So I'm going to press on helix, and it tells you what it's going to do. It kind of shows you a video. And let's, let's press go. I hope it's clear enough for those trees, but we'll find out. We can always stop it if it looks like it's going to hit those trees. So I'm going to press go. And it started recording again, and it's gonna do a helix. So it looks like it's flying around me and up and away. So I'm just gonna wave at you guys. It looks like it's having a little trouble with tracking. Man, it's going way the hell out there. Okay, stop. So honestly, it looked like it might hit those trees over there, so I stopped it. So, um, gosh, the... The settings for that, I don't, I'm not really sure how exactly to adjust those settings. But when I did press stop, it stopped recording. So I'm coming back anyway. So maybe, you know, a little bit confusing on the actual distances it's going to go. So you need to make sure you're in a really wide open space above you because it didn't go that high. So I'm just driving it back, coming on back here, right about there should be good. Okay, so clicking on myself again, of course I have to take off the stick controls by pressing that little button. Clicking on myself again, so it's active tracking me again. And let's try a rocket. So before I do rocket, do I want to go a little closer maybe? I'm going to press stop and I'm going to get the sticks back on the screen. A little confusing, a little redundant, but this is how you do it. I'll click on myself and let's try the rocket. Actually, let me bring it over here a little bit so it's not facing that way. Let's go right about here. Okay. And of course, I'm out of view, so I wanna press on the gimbal again, maybe tilt myself down. When you do press it, it does uh, active track you, does center you, try to center you in the picture. So if you can see part of your body, just press on yourself and it will try to center you. So let's try rocket. So I'm gonna press rocket, and you can see how it's just gonna go straight up, pointing downward at the subject. Okay, so apparently I need to get in possibly right underneath it. Let's try this. So it's active tracking me right underneath. Let's press go and see if it goes straight up. It's recording again. Hopefully it's keeping me in view. Woohoo! Peace. Going directly up. Okay, and the wind is blowing pretty good from this direction now. We're getting like five to 10, and you'll see that video. I'll have it up on the screen so you can see how stable it is in five to 10, going straight up. And we can see our height is, it's going 140, it looked like it went 145 feet, and now it's coming back down. I didn't really see anything to adjust that, so if, if they don't have that feature to adjust how far out it goes in these quick shot features maybe that's something dji can implement i didn't see them okay quick shot ended and it stopped recording automatically and it's just going to hover there cool awesome 
So I'm gonna get out of quick shot. I think that's pretty much everything. You see how I just clicked on my, now it's tracking my shadow. So I definitely wanna click on myself if I'm gonna do more tracking. And I think that's all the quick shot. So I'm gonna stop the quick shot. And let's see what else we can do here. Stop. Okay, now I'm just pressing on the quick shot icon and we have all the gesture control and stuff. So apparently you probably don't want to go into gesture control when it's this high, otherwise it's not going to know where you are. So you want to come down a little bit, getting the sticks back on the screen, coming on down. And of course, since it's not an active track, the camera is still facing the ground, so I need to go push my gimbal up. There we go. So just kind of facing myself here. And let's see what else we can do. Let's try to go into gesture control real quick. And I wanted to just revisit this really fast if we have enough power. We have 28%, so I'm gonna hurry up here. And so now it's in gesture control, so it should be, yeah, so it's looking for my hand. There we go. Let's see how it does in some wind. So I got my hand here and I'm just controlling it. Doing fairly good. Let's see how it does. Oh, see it lost, it lost me there. It's not that great. Gesture control, DJI really needs to work on that, especially in any wind and sun. It's a little weird because it gets a little too close sometimes. A little scary. You can push it back by just walking into it, but look how close my hands are getting to the blades before it recognizes my hand. So, a little weird. And then you want to get your hand out of the way. Let's do a quick, um, let's do a quick picture. We're almost at low battery. So, I'm gonna really push, put my thumb and forefinger there to make some shots. And it looks like when it's this close, you really do want to connect your thumb and forefinger. Let's see if it's gonna do it. It's a little weird, it doesn't work perfectly, but we're waiting for those red lights to blink. It looks like it took one shot, but you see it's not very reliable. I'm not seeing those lights really blinking to take a picture again. So it's looking for my hand. Anyway, let's just do a quick little landing on our hand. This is also, if you hand launch, you can also hand land. So you put your hand underneath, grab it, and it just shuts off. So that's pretty cool. I wanted to do that before the battery goes down too low. If you do try to do like any kind of hand gesture control when it's in its low voltage mode and landing, it won't let you go into hand gesture landing. So you, you're gonna have to go back to your phone. And I think I went over that in the first part of the, the flight test. So we spent one battery. I'm gonna turn this off, pop in the next battery, and we'll link it up to the controller. I'll show you how to link it up to the controller if you've been flying directly from your phone. And then we'll do a controller flight test and maybe a little bit of a range test if we got some time. Um, but I will be making another video strictly on the range test for this thing, so uh, definitely check that out. Anyway, let me get this other battery in and let's link up the controller. Okay, so a quick little controller link up with the uh, um, craft and also the phone. I, I did order another battery and also that OTG cable where you can plug your phone directly into the controller. Right now, I don't have the OTG. DJI should really include that in the package. It's just a little cable that links the phone to the controller and you need a special adapter. I don't know why they didn't include that in the Flymore combo, but nevertheless, I did order that and another battery and also the DJI goggles, so that'll be a uh, review coming up and all that stuff but for now we're just going to do the wireless linking between the two crafts and the phone and see how that performs with the flight test and I'm also going to be trying the Mavic sunshade here so we're gonna see if that fits on I did try it before and it does fit so let's go ahead and uh, open this up this is a great little sunshade I think it's like around 20 bucks from DJI and I will have the link in the description and it apparently does fit just about perfect in this pack. You can't really zip the front uh, pocket where it goes, but anyway, here's how it goes on. So you just push it down, fits on perfectly, just like the Mavic controller, and it gives you a little bit of shade for your, uh, your controller and your phone and stuff, so you can see what's going on. 
So since we don't have the cable to link up, all I'm doing is pushing in the phone here into the controller, clamp it in like you would the Mavic, same deal. Everything's just basically the same. Get that in there, and now we're ready to go. So I wanna slap this new battery in the Spark. Slide and click. What I like to do is after every flight, just make sure you have a nice soft material and just wipe your lenses. So I'm wiping the, the actual camera lens and also the sensors in the front, just so there's no dirt or smudging on there. So you get the best possible picture. Cool, so for this, all we do is turn the bad boy on and click, click and hold till we hear the fan come on. That's gonna be booting up. And now we want to go into controller mode and then link up the controller. What I notice if you're flying straight from the phone via Wi-Fi and you're not using this controller, you have to kind of rebind it every time, which is kind of irritating. But if you know you're gonna be flying with just the controller for many flights, um, just wait a few minutes after you, not a few minutes, but maybe a minute after you turn both things on and you will get a green light that links it up. But if you're going, like I said, from phone strictly controlled to the controller, this is what you have to do, it seems, every time. So boot up the craft turn on the controller and you're gonna see there's this red blinking here so that will never bind if you're coming straight from the Wi-Fi and so here's what you do you press pause function and this top right trigger button all at the same time until you hear the controller beeping but first what we want to do is we want to press the power button until we hear uh, one beep so I'm just gonna click and hold the power button here one beep let go so what that's doing is that's looking for the controller and now we want to press function pause and this top right trigger all at the same time and hold it so you hear that and then you see the green blinking there there we go so we see now we see solid green and we heard those two beeps. Now this controller and that is actually linked up. Looks like this grip is actually covering up the sensor so it thinks it's it's low light. So if that happens and you can't see your phone, I would just make sure you take off your auto brightness and put it full brightness so you can see what's going on. So you can clamp it in there good and it's not covering up your your light sensor on your phone or whatever. Cool, so I'm gonna go ahead and go in here again and start the AZ screen recorder app that I like to use. And it's starting to record. And now I wanna go into my Wi-Fi settings again. And I wanna make sure I'm connected strictly to, I don't wanna be connected to the Spark, I wanna be connected to um, the Spark RC. There we go. So it looks like it figured it out and it auto-connected in that, that instance. Um, if it doesn't, just make sure you go, go into your Wi-Fi and connect your phone directly to your RC controller. Now what's happening is this is connected to this and this is connected to that. Now we can control it with our sticks. So that's how you do it. I know it's not super easy, but that's the way it's happening. Now we're gonna go into DJI Go 4 app. And we're gonna go and fly this thing. So it's doing a version check. Everything's up to date. Pressing go fly. Okay. All right, cool. Having the screen record so you guys can see what's going on. And we're already at 96% power. So we lost 4% power doing all that. So that's kind of what you can expect. Now we're at 95, so we better start flying. And there's our map there if we want to check out our map. So the map doesn't show up apparently if you're using direct um, phone to Spark connection. But once you get the controller in, this little map over here does show up. It's your location map, so you can use that. All right, let's get flying. So again, we're going to do a little um, return to home test. So I want to launch straight from there. So I can either launch from the app or in this instance, since we have the controller, we'll just spin up the motors just by pressing both sticks down and in. That arms it. So it should be logging its location. And we're just going to push up on the controller on the throttle stick. Oh, that was a little weird. Um, What's it doing? Okay. All 
Not too sure what that was about, but we're up. I'm just gonna go up a little bit and then come down. So full throttle up. I'll have the video up on the screen of the phone here and we're going 4.5 meters per second or miles per hour actually. Full throttle down. This is just in regular GPS mode. It's going about three miles per hour down. Cool, so just like a regular controller, we've got all of our functions here. I'm yawing to the left. There's the yaw right there. And here's our full speed forward. And this is just regular GPS mode. I'm just using the controls to control it. Nice and easy. And I almost forgot to record the video. So recording, oops. Let's go into video. And I'm starting the recording. So this is gonna be the 1080p recording I'll have up on the screen. And this is full sticks. Whoa, see it, it noticed me there. So I went ahead and stopped before it hit me. That's normal. So really the only difference you can do in with the controller is fly it manually. And also you've got that map up on the screen that you can let's see how this is. There you go, so it detected me again. And so it's not gonna crash into me. So the front sensors are really good. And you turn away from the object and you can keep going. So it's working out well. And here's how you can just fly it like a normal, a normal quadcopter with a controller. It's flying really well. But the cool thing about this is now we can go into sport mode. So I'm gonna flip this switch here on the middle of the controller, go into sport, but keep in mind that it took off the front sensing controls. So I'm in sport mode now. Let's see how the video is in sport mode too. So here's full stick forward. Look at that angle. So much higher, quicker, faster angle. Woo! And you can see how fast it is now. And it is maintaining, it is maintaining its height from the ground really, really well. Let's see how fast it'll go. So I just let off and it really pulls itself back to stop itself. And I'll have the video up so you can see how that's all looking. Um, let me go, I wanna go forward as fast as possible. I wanna get up a little bit. I'll have the video up on the screen with our, our speeds and stuff. I wanna see how fast it'll go in sport mode, directly in that direction. I wanna get above everything. Okay, and then I'm gonna full pitch forward. And let's see how fast it'll get up to. I'll have this recorded. 32.5 miles per hour. Okay, that was its maximum speed. Whoa. Coming on back. So it looks to me like the video gets a little bit choppy because we're in sport mode, you know, and it can't really. deal with the camera that perfectly, but it's still working. I'm just flying around full stick forward. Let's come on back here. Letting off the stick, and you'll be able to see in the video how that's how that's doing. But now we can, um, let me come down a little bit. Come on forward. Let's see how the descent is. I'm full stick down, and we're going about the same mile per hour down. So it doesn't, well actually 4.5, it does change. So it gives you like another two miles per hour. Oh, that was interesting. All right, cool. Okay, so that's kind of what the video's like and keep in mind that we can do pictures and video off and on and our gimbal control here. I can um, get above us a little bit. And with this roller, I can just roll the gimbal down. Let's kind of get it up. So you can manually control these kinds of shots if you want to. You know what I mean? 60% power left, we're doing good. So I'm just rotating the gimbal. You can go fairly slow. This is trying to do it really slow with that roller. You know what I mean? And that's all the way forward. And we can kind of see our map on top. If we just press on our map here, there we go. So it looks like it's a little bit 
blurry for some reason. There we go, that's a little better. It shows you your flight route and it, if you have a data connection, it's gonna be showing your data right there, the map underneath. Clicking on the camera again and let's take some um, camera shots. See how good the camera is up here. So let's see, if I press the camera button on the top, the hardware button, I am pressing it once. And I'm not sure, but we'll see if that's taking pictures. I don't think so. I think you gotta, you definitely have to. Well, I am seeing the actual, the record button is flashing. So maybe that is taking pictures. I'll have those up on there if it is taking those pictures. And take another one. But just to be safe, I do wanna kind of, I'm hands off and it's kind of rotating. Okay, I wanna stop the recording. And I'm just gonna take a couple pictures way up here. Let's get some view of the uh, Malai area. And we'll do a snapshot with this hardware button on the controller. Is it gonna take a photo? Yeah, that's taking photos. Switched into photo mode when I pressed it. There we go, now it's taking photos. I'm not sure if it took a photo that first time I touched it, but. Anyway, that's what we can expect for photos. I'm just taking a few. I'll have those popping up on the screen. So you can see this. Okay, let's take one straight down of the grass. See how that is. I'm not adjusting any of the EV settings or anything. I'm just going to leave it all stock. Let's go back towards the ocean. Those are the West Maui Mountains over there. Okay, so this button here is set to, this little trigger on the bottom, is set to bring us into our camera settings. So if we did want to adjust the EV and all that, and our shutter speed and all that, we can do that from here. Um, just by pressing like plus and minus on the EV setting, you see how I'm making it brighter or more dim. So if, you know, depending on your lighting, you can go ahead and adjust this. So, I'm just gonna kind of leave it at zero there. That's kind of a cool little feature. And you know, all the DJI crafts can do that nowadays. So you want that to go away, you can either tap the middle of the screen or I'm just gonna press that button again. And yeah, so that kind of went away. Cool, so let's go ahead and, I've only got a little bit of power left. Let's go ahead and test the return to home. So I'm gonna go out uh, that away towards the golf course. I'm gonna fly full pitch forward now. Oops, I wanna start recording the video actually. So I'm going back into video mode and I'm pressing the left trigger on the top. I've gotta press it again because it didn't start apparently. Why isn't it recording? Don't know why. There we go, a little bit of a lag there, so it might be a lot better with the, um, with the uh, plug directly into the craft. So I'm just gonna fly out here as far as it'll let me with the amount of um, battery life we have left. And I'm full pitch forward in sport mode now, guys, so you can see what the video is looking like. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of rotate the screen down a little bit. You can see what that's all about. Now this is, you know, residential. You really shouldn't be flying over houses like this. I'm just doing this in the demo. And so you're not gonna really get amazing range when you're in a residential area. Here we go, a little safer over the golf course. I'm just gonna try to keep it over this golf course here. A Little bit of lag, a little choppy. You can't really see what's going on too much because all this Wi-Fi in the area is just full on influencing it. So it looks like you can see I lost, the app actually crashed. <laughs> okay, that's the first time that's happened to me. This is the LG G6 phone. So it automatically went into return to home. You can hear that beeping, I didn't touch nothing. I'm gonna click back on to the DJI Go 4 app. And let's let it come on home and land since we're already pretty low on power. So 
So I'm just kind of waiting. I've got the DJI Go 4 app up again. Looks like it's in range, so I'm gonna press Go Fly. I have got this thing out in line of sight, not around a uh, residential area. I've got this thing out like 1.5 miles. So this thing will go pretty far and I'll be doing that range test coming up here in a little bit so you can really see it. So returning to home, I'm seeing a little bit of choppiness is fighting that wind. I'm trying to figure out where its home is. And I can, looks like I'm, I'm trying to roll the gimbal down and it's kind of fighting the gimbal. So it's not really wanting to, um, yeah, it's coming. It's looking at home now. Wow, so the wind or something's really influencing it. It's pretty windy up there right now. You can see the wind is blowing pretty hardcore from from this direction now. But it did uh, reach, looks like it's reaching its home point. Well, it thinks it's returned to home point. I'm gonna pitch the camera down now. And wow, it's way the heck over there. Oh, you know why? Because it didn't have enough power. To, when it hit 10%, it's just gonna land wherever it is. So be careful with that. Make sure you steer it on back because it'll land wherever it is at 10%, at, uh, but you can still control it and you can forcefully push it up if you need to. So I'm just gonna land it now. Unfortunately, wasn't able to do the return to home accuracy, but we saw in the first part that it was really good. Here's how it is in the wind. And you'll be able to see the video. Let me turn it here. I'm forcing it up now. I'm pushing the throttle just to prevent it from landing. You can see how it's trying to fight that wind and tilting. So that's a good 15 from that direction right now. And you'll see how stable the video is. But definitely coming home, it looked like it was really influencing the yaw rate. 2% battery. <laughs> Okay, so it's gonna force land pretty soon. I'm gonna get it over its landing pad. Yeah, it's force landing. There we go, I was able to control it right over that landing pad. Okay, cool. So, definitely wanna stop recording here. So I'm gonna press the left trigger again, and it stopped recording. Um, again, in the first part of my review, I did mention that I accidentally unplugged the battery and stopped, didn't stop the recording and I think it was corrupted the file. So really make sure you stop that recording whenever you land so you don't corrupt your video. Anyway, cool. So that's how it flies with the controller and the phone. Um, let's just go through a little pros and cons here, guys. Since that's actually the only battery I have left, I'm gonna turn this off so we're not getting it too low. You really shouldn't fly it till it's 0% like I do. It's just for review purposes because you'll end up diminishing the longevity of your battery. So um, I'll go ahead and put this back in so we have something to grip onto. Okay, so a little pros and cons. That's it with the controller, guys. With the Flymore Combo controller. Again, I have one more battery coming in, so I'll have a total of three batteries I ordered and also that um, jumper cable so you can connect your phone directly to your controller. I will say I did another flight like this where the controller was connected to the phone and to this and I didn't have that weird, you saw when I first launched it kind of ha was having some weird sensor issues. I'm not sure really what that was but it never did that before so I'm glad you kind of got to see that in this part of the review. Um, well, we can see in a, like a residential area how when you get you know, several hundred feet away, you're gonna start to get breakup. That's just because there's so much Wi-Fi bubbles from everybody's internet all over the place. And you are gonna get that interference. Plus there's those power lines over there. But that's that's kind of how it's performing in this area. Um, in the range test, I'm gonna do a full-on range test in the country. So there's no influence, you know, or interference. Man, the wind's really blowing now from this direction. But I'll have had the video up on the screen so you guys can see how the video, how stable it is with the controller, even in sport mode. And also in this kind of wind, is kind of getting up and down and gusting. 
probably anywhere from 5 to 15, maybe even 20 at times. It was able to handle it. It seemed like in the return to home I was watching the screen and it was kind of tough for it to like use its you know yaw stabilization. It doesn't really have any yaw stabilization on the gimbal. So you could see that it was a little bit jerky coming back. And um, you definitely want to, before you're, it's 10%, you want to make sure it's near you because at 10%, it'll automatically go into a start, a start of an auto landing. You can still control it like I showed you, you know, full function control with the sticks, but it's going to constantly go down unless you push it up with the throttle, which at least you can still do that. The sport mode was super fast, so you can see me flying around with it like crazy in sport mode. Even in sport mode, it adjusts the camera down a little bit so you don't get the propellers in view, which is cool. And it also maintained its height perfectly going, I think it was what, 42? around there 42 43 to 45 miles per hour in sport mode maximum uh, a little bit you know quite a bit faster than gps mode uh, without the controller and with the controller and it'll also just like take off quick it stops quick in sport mode of course give yourself a little bit more room everything seemed like a little bit faster well, a lot faster in sport mode the you know the vertical acceleration was about two miles per hour in both directions faster in sport mode just so you can go faster and keep in mind if you're trying to get really good video um, you're not going to really be wanting to use sport mode um, one thing i still haven't gone through is the tripod mode um, i still haven't gone through that but really all it is is it just slows everything super down the yaw is really only like this when you're in tripod mode really slow um, you can you can ascend and descend pretty quickly in tripod mode but the forward motion is also super slow so you're getting really smooth video and uh, maybe i'll touch on that in the next part of the review but this is the part two of the flight test and i hope you guys enjoyed that it's cool that you can use mavic accessories with your spark because the antennas are the same length and the sticks are the same distance apart you know all that stuff so you can use a lot of the same um, accessories and also like those iPad clamps the clamps are the same on the spark too so you can put in one of those iPad clamps and have your iPad up here I've got a couple of them I'll be reviewing pretty soon but all in all that's it guys uh, the flight time I've been getting with this thing until it's like z almost zero percent is just around 15 minutes and you probably don't want to get it that low um, but I really do like that feature where you can you can forcefully exit out of everything with your controls if you want to until it gets to that like super low barely zero percent power and then it will just automatically start going down nothing you do will will push it back up you can still adjust it laterally where it lands but you can't give it any more throttle up obviously because the battery's gonna die but i hope you like that part two of the flight test and you enjoyed it um, don't forget to check out my channel i do a lot of reviews like this and a lot of other dji products coming up and also some competition for the spark anyways thanks for tuning in guys the links down below of where you can get all this stuff and i hope you enjoyed that see you in the next video take care